Hello there, people of the internet. My name is Udul Jagero, and this is Dialogues with Jagero. We are continuing our beautiful, wonderful series called The Pleasure Principle with the beautiful Doreen. I, you're very likable, Doreen. How do you know? I mean, you're very likable, meaning that somebody looks at you and, and falls in love with what they're saying. Uh, oh, thank you. I love the compliment. Yeah? Yeah. Um, and for the audience, I hope that you've been enjoying this series. You know, uh, this is episode five. We are going to be talking about male dysfunction. No. What is it? Male <laughs> no sex dysfunction. Male sex dysfunction, yes. Yeah. So we are going to be talking about male sex dysfunction. Yeah. But before that, I want to tell you a story. Yeah. Uh, in my culture, mm. when a man and a, a wife, a husband and a wife have stayed for a little bit longer than expected before having a child, hmm. the community gets into the picture <laughs> and try to rescue the situation, you know? Yeah. Uh, so they leave the man's ego intact, you know? Hmm. And then, um, so they will ask the wife uh. to go and have a night with a brother or a mm. cousin. Yeah. You know? Mm. And wait mm. if something is going to happen. Hmm. You know? I hear a lot of that in African, most African yeah. um, societies, yeah. So, the so it happens in yours as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does it still happen? Okay, but you had of it. You see now, the problem with our, with our society and the community, the village community right now, mm. that a lot of elders are no longer having the sense of leadership that they used to have. Yeah. That sense of leadership has waned. Mm. Uh, so I think people are left to their own devices. Mm. Even the issue of, in, of wife inheritance, which used to be very uh, widespread in my community, is no longer there as so much. Mm. You know, my 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 brother passed on, and my we have not had that conversation with my with my with my sister in law. What happens? Because she's very young. Yeah. She's just about thirty years. Okay. You know, that's very young in the village. Mm. Anyway, so they will they will test the waters. Have you sleep with a mm. with a cousin or a brother and wait it, and mm. then yeah. To see who has the problem. Yeah. Yeah. So if the woman gets a child, mm. uh, if she gamos remo, you know gamo remo means you know getting pregnant. Yeah. If she gets pregnant, they know. Uh huh. Mm. It is the man. Mm. Male sexual dysfunction. Dysfunction. So then they have protected the man. So she gets a child with the cousin. Yes. But then they don't tell him. They don't tell him. T it is his child. It's his child. Yeah. They don't have to tell him you have a problem. No. We they don't. Just... They don't. They don't. Because so I... he goes on taking care of. Yes. <laughs> you know, in your culture also, if you have a child, yeah. if you, we, if you're married to a man, mm. whichever child you come with, that belongs to the man. You can cheat, go get another child. Mm. It's always with the man. The, mm. the people will even know mm. that that's, that's not the man's child. Yeah. But it is his responsibility. Mm. Those are his people. Yeah. You can bring as many children as you want. They will not belong to any man. Yeah. They're, they're his. As long as you don't hurt his ego, just let him come in you as he wants. Yeah. As, the way he's been coming into you. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm seeing a problem there. What if the man knows that he has a problem? It will be difficult for him to know because mm. uh, maybe if he has got, because some of the things that we are going to be looking at is low libido. Mm. We are going to be talking about premature ejaculation. Mm. So probably those could be telltale signs mm. that he might be having a problem. Mm. But again, because of his ego, he's not going to come forth yeah. and say this. And I believe that is the, that is the center of our discussion. Yeah, want... Because men, uh, definitely every man has been put under pressure to be able to find his sense of self-worth based on how he's able to satisfy his woman. Yes. Right? So if there's any effect to his sense of arousal, either arousal or, um, you know, desire, capacity to desire or to be able to ejaculate or to sustain an erection or to get an erection, mm. um, you know, then he, he gets sensations, but then he fights them. 
Yeah. Because he cannot be weak. He, he cannot get that problem. Right? So I suspect such a man may know because even when men, because one of the issues that men struggle with is perform, performance anxiety. Mm. The anxiety that comes from, am I making her happy? Am I making her orgasm? Do I turn her on? Do I know what turns her on? Am I touching her in the right places? Men are filled up with that, that when they're performing, they actually have anxiety, which ends up affecting their capacity to sustain an erection or even get one. Yeah. So he he might know, but I like that. Not that I like it. Sorry, I'll take that back. Mm. But I think what the community is doing is for him to keep on figuring that out. When he sees a baby, he might drop his fears and then tell, tell himself, oh, I'm doing a good thing. Because then um, sex was looked at, the value of sex was put on procreation. Yes. Kitambo, right? Mm. Um, you know, like uh, if you if you have a child, then your sex is good. Yeah. If you are making love, making love is for having babies or having children. We for still creation. have that. Yeah. You we still have that as one of the reasons why we have an orgasm gap. Because most people come to uh, make love so they can be able to procreate. They look at it as the underlying reason for intercourse. Mm. Yeah. And they don't get to look at pleasure. Um, when we look at dysfunctions, maybe we should, um, uh, when we get there, when you lead. Me yes. There. I want us to talk about one of your products. The massage in Uganda. Uh, hmm. You're taking us back to Uganda and the massage in Uganda. Yeah. Tell me about it. Uganda, Uganda massage is a huge thing. Mm. You know, one of the things I like about Uganda is that there are very, very clear boundaries yeah. about massage. Yeah. You know, there is the massage with a happy ending. Mm. There is just the massage. They then there are other names, mm. you know, whatever. Yeah. But then before we go on, because probably this is gonna be very important in our in this discussion. Mm. Why is why is sensual sensuous? Mas the sensuous massage oil. By wellness. Yeah, together. By wellness together. My company is called Wellness Together. Mm. Yeah. How why why is why is massage important in our life in our life very broad question i'll start with something that i just read in a kamasutra book that i love and i enjoy you are into very kamasutra things i, I love mindfulness i love uh, essentially to love pleasure um i am teaching people the difference between um sex and pleasure and now um before coming to this let me um let me see or show you how we are going to use the massage oil in that experience yeah but first i want to just share something that just picked my fancy right now um Massage oils or aroma or scent or perfume is something that is sort of like waning out as people lose out on time. Um, as people people lose out on time that it takes to have foreplay. Uh, lately, we are very fast generation. Uh, most people say they don't have time for foreplay or light candles, get the oils, have a massage every night, get the feathers. You know, who has that time? We have only 30 minutes at home. The woman and the man are all working, so I get those things. Dorina, we don't have that time. So the not having time is is, is leading to a lot of uh, sex problems as well. Mm. And um, one of the treatments for erectile dysfunction, uh, because when we look at sexual dysfunction, it's just the capacity to not be able to um, either sustain or um, the like, like frequent issues that come with either getting an, um, an erection, sustaining an erection, uh, being able to um, um, experience desire or sustain libido, um, you know, especially when it comes to uh, both men and women experience sexual dysfunctions, but we are looking at sex dysfunctions in men. I think this, these last episodes have been good. I've been talking about men mostly. Yeah. I came with the women agenda. <laughs> oh yeah, but we, we, we. you have streamlined me. You're doing a good job. You're a good leader. Yes, yeah. thank you very much. <laughs> okay, so taking you uh, back to um, when when we look at pleasure, but one of the ways in which we heal erectile dysfunction because just because a man does not maybe up uh, uh, premature ejaculation, just because a man may have issues with erection doesn't mean he can't enjoy sex. Mm. Sex is not only penetration. We remove the pleasure aspect from sex. When we remove the pleasure aspect from sex, then we become so limited and limiting and we become very uncreative when it comes to supporting each other, depending on our flows. Because none of us is perfect, not even I. 
I will be good at something and I not be good at something else. I cannot be expected to be perfect, right? So where I'm not good, I need to be able to find ways in which that does not get to affect our relationship, right? So for partners or for men who experience um, um, erectile dysfunction, it's just in the ways in which they have to understand what causes the erectile dysfunction. I get to look at some of the ways being reasons uh, being low testosterone levels and um, their, capacity, their pituitary levels in the brain being a bit too high or too low. You know, if they have brain dysfunction, um, especially when it comes to the, 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 the function of the pituitary gland and thyroid gland, then their testosterone levels are going to be low or too high. And that will affect their capacity to get an erection, meaning there's not enough blood flow. Men need, men need a surge of blood flow to be able to get an erection and sustain it and there are many reasons why they may not sometimes it's just their brain they are thinking the way they think about things sometimes it's just anxiety sometimes it's 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 it's, it's low self-esteem but now let's look at hormones the role of hormones and that being it what causes low testosterone it is too much substance abuse or recreational drugs. Mm. It's obesity, not minding their weight or how they eat. It's too much alcohol, not having limits to how much alcohol they drink. Medications, just taking medication for almost everything, especially at, um, rather antibiotics. It's also um, seeing some of the other medications they take, also medications for high blood pressure, for diabetes. There are so many medical reasons and there are so many physical causes of low testosterone. But now let's look at um, the lifestyle causes. Now, bringing it slowly um, down to uh, performance anxiety, because he's expected to be good in bed. He's expected to have a certain size. Size? Mm. And we never, we've never talked about size. Hey, and yeah. you know, there's, there's, the, there's the word of size matters. Let's talk about size. Well, for, I, size I, good. Can I digress? <laughs> <laughs> you see, you are because one of the things that that men walk around with is if he doesn't have, have a good size and good size is what, you know, um, the outside world will say, not what compatibility calls for, you know, and that um, element in itself can affect him. Because what's a good size, you see? It's like how women worry about their, their physical appearance. Like, what does he like? How much is enough weight? How much is enough talking? How much is enough um, size of eyes? Does he like them squinty? Does he like them large? As in, we are always just thinking about our physical appearance. Men think about the size of their penis and the performance. So all that goes into his mind. Is it going to fit into her? Is she tight? Is she wide? Which sex styles will I use? Um, am I just using the right sex styles? Is she feeling me? You know, is she telling me? And so they're going to start forcing these women to, you know, to keep, uh, you know, men keep asking, can you feel me? Can you feel it? Is it good? <laughs> <laughs> they want their yeah. reinforcement. Is yeah. it the one? Is this what you've been waiting for? <laughs> you know, the one their reinforcement, even before he has gotten inside, he's asking, can you feel it? <laughs> Take it on the whole lid, fill it. Rebecca talks about the gap. You know what? Talk, Rebecca talks a lot about the gap. Yeah. <laughs> the circumference. Yeah. You know, but you are you are you are you are not you are not you are not telling me anything. But he's told you. So why should I repeat what he's told? No, you? no, no, I want no. I no. tell you what he's not told you. Yes. I think don't don't digress too much. <laughs> We're looking at performance anxiety. <laughs> For me, size really doesn't matter. It's mm. knowing how to, um, you know, work with the size, knowing which sex styles to um, delve into when it comes to the sizes you have. Because, you know, you may have a small penis and I'm tight. And we are compatible. You may have a big penis and it's short. It's not long. It doesn't hit my cervix. Right? You may, as in, it's just um, the, the act of, it's one thing to have sex intercourse. It's another thing to have the right acts, the right strokes, the right movement for both the woman and the man. So I think it's the way we make love that brings about sexual satisfaction. Many times women will look for a big penis and then the big penis bypasses majority of their orgasmic parts in the vagina. Uh -huh. Because our juicest parts are actually before the cervix. 
So if he, if, 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 if the man gets inside and phew, goes straight for the cervix, he's missed out on the, the treasures. Right, yeah. and the, if she does not know how the dark to, areas with the bats, the dark, the, the the light areas with the you know the the parts with 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 the marigolds and then the you know the the beautiful the the, the beautiful sensations and all that like the G spot is not the O spot or the S spot the rather the S spot we have different spots in the vagina lots of spots that are S that, spot yeah S spot. <laughs> so there's the 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 ring of the vagina. Yes. Is 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 good enough to make a woman orgasm. Just the ring of the vagina. Now how many people bypass it? When we're looking at the orgasm gap, um one of the reasons of the orgasm gap is the lack of pleasure in the act of making love. When people are not mindful enough to understand the different orgasmic spaces or places on, on every woman because one woman has discovered her clitoral orgasm. She's not discovered her, her ring orgasm, right? Another one is so good with the entrance of her vagina and she's not good with the cervical orgasm. Some are good with the understanding of all of them. So now just imagine a man who has a small dick, right? And a woman- Small and short. Small and short, but then it's curved. It's curved. <laughs> Now let me tell you something. We digress a little bit, but let's talk about the massage oil. So we were talking about the pleasure and sex and how we lose out on the concept of pleasure in that um, because we don't focus on pleasure, we get to focus on the end game. We get to focus on penetrative sex only. And then um, people who experience erectile dysfunction or premature ejaculation really have problems with blood flow. And so as a lover, as a woman, if you are aware of it and you want to make your partner feel comfortable, because most of the times the discomfort comes from anxiety. He's worried if you find him worthy. He's worried if you find him good enough. If he's worried if he's the king of the jungle, right? And so if you're to relay his fears, I always um, train women what I call the lingam massage. The lingam massage. Yeah, the lingam massage is when you focus on the erotic parts of the man but then you give them enough stimulation you give them enough touch so touch for the man has to ensure that it builds blood flow and i always say that the shaft of the man this triangular part is usually the, the it's the hardest to get blood flow so all the blood will be surging then it takes long because it has to take it you know, in bits, you know, to be able to get it into the dick. So um, if a woman or if the couple of the partners love to be able to touch themselves, um, touch should be sensual touch. It should not be, it should not just be a massage, but it should be sensual touch, targeting the erogenous zones of the man, but also when you're touched, you're stimulated. And then when you're stimulated, there's blood flow. So we'll talk, I'll tell you about food, but then why I came up with this oil. Now, there's so many massage oils out there, but I worry about endocrine disruptors. Already a man who is experiencing erectile dysfunction or premature ejaculation could have testosterone issues, which is a hormonal imbalance, right? So we need to check out on the things which cause hormonal imbalances in the, in the home. Uh, most of what causes us hormonal imbalances is in the home. It's the pesticide, rather it's the pesticides on the food that we're eating, but also it's the cosmetics that we use, which have perfume, which have fra rather fragrances, which are not natural, which are synthetic, which have uh, these, these sprays we use in the bathroom, the plastic we have in the kitchen, the aluminum saucepans that we are using at home. Um, you know, we are not minding those things. And the other thing that I now come to is the frequency of the oils we're using in the bedroom, because we all want to be essential in the bedroom i know right now if we don't mind the oils we are buying we are use we are adding more erectile disruptor rather um, um hormonal disruptors into the body we are curing something by causing a, a problem with it so if we touch the food and heal it we also need to touch the cosmetics or the things that we use so the oils that we use on our body skin um absorbs Skin is an organ that absorbs, right? Mm. Anything you put on your skin in 20 minutes will be in your bloodstream, mm. right? So if I'm massaging you with an oil which is going to disrupt your hormonal profile, then it's it's not going to allow for proper blood flow. 
So we need proper oils or therapeutic oils which are plant based, which don't have any chemical, rather any um, you, any toxins in them. So the sensuous oil blend um, is one which has a diffuser oil, it has a massage oil, it has a roller blend. I will tell you about those others, but now why use this one? So when a woman is going to give a lingam massage to a man, and she's going to concentrate on this part, this oil one is going to make it so easy for the for 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 oral play. It's going to be easy for uh, for um, for giving him a BJ, right? Because it's edible. You can give him the massage, give him a hand job, and be able to give him um, to put your mouth on it. So you're not worried about what you're swallowing as well. Safety when giving the blood job, right? Then two, it's stimulating. So I use oils. I put oils together that are stimulating. Um, black or a black pepper oil. <clears throat> I, I put in ginger, um, oils that stimulate blood flow so a man is able to get uh, better erections and also sustain uh, most of his erections. But also when I'm teaching the massage, I teach him to be able to use these parts to create some pressure when they're giving the massage. During d, &D uh, Design Durability events, we have practical classes, right? Um, when we come to the art of touch and all that, I'll take you through a little bit, but I encourage people to be able to also come for our dinners and learn. So there's the way in which you, you apply pressure on the man when it comes to this area. And then you ensure that you can age in the process of giving the massage. So first you relax his body. It will include maybe bathing with him. It will include talking to him about what you're going to do to him. It will include maybe tying him up. So you tell him, relax, this is yours. And then make it uh, very clear that's going to be a selfless act. That you want to give him a massage and there's no end game. What do you we mean don't have to, We don't have to have sex. I need you to receive and take in for once. Because you see men are always performing and giving. Um, I usually talk about anxious and avoidant attachment styles. Some men are anxious or preoccupied. So they're always occupied with pleasing, 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 that they're not able to go into their bodies and feel. <clears throat> right? Theirs is, make her come, make her come. Does she like me? Am I good? They get satisfaction from that. But then they're not able to feel pleasure. Right? So when, um, when you're giving a lingual massage, you need to tell him this is for you. He doesn't have to, I don't want you to think, oh, now she's giving me a massage, I need to give her double. No, I want you to receive, I want you to take, and I want you to feel. If it ends um, into us um, having sex, penetrative sex, that's okay, but this is the sex I'm giving you. This is the pleasure I'm giving you is to give you a massage, right? So one, uh, you should relax him. Two, he should know that it's a selfless act. He doesn't have to reciprocate, right? He needs to enjoy receiving. Then three, it has to be intended to be able to age his orgasm, you know? Because you're going to give him the massage to lead into an orgasm, which is totally oral, right? So when she starts massaging him, she needs to be able to um, observe how he's able to relax. I can tell, I can tell when I'm touching a man that he's, 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 he's pent up, he's dysregulated. And as you get to massage him, you can tell, tell that he's relaxing and he's relaxed. And that relaxation is important for men to be able to allow for blood to flow and they get a good erection that they can sustain as well, right? But now there is a catch as well in there. When she's massaging him, um, when she gets to the balls, it's nice if she touches all the parts, but tenderly, softly, and nicely, both with her hands, with her tongue, with her lips, not with the teeth, but to be able to create enough touch and touch that is different. Then the, the, the peppermint in this oil is as well stimulating. It gives that cold dish effect, mm -hmm. you know, that builds, creates blood flow. So you feel cold on the outside, but he feels hot on the inside, right? I know you're imagining that, but it's a good thing. You know, and so while she's doing that and she's really giving <laughs> different, <laughs> she's giving different hits and such. <laughs> so you're looking like on your... <laughs> she's giving different sensations. <laughs> it's both <laughs> and the heat and the cold. And I'm sorry that. <laughs> With a kind of touch. It's another, another lunch of information. <laughs> so it's, it's the hand touch. It's the tongue touch. 
it's the lips you know you could use the feathers as well yeah those different sensations really mm. not and it doesn't take long you're gonna love that you know it you would be able to love that yeah. but then also to be able to when she starts now giving the hand job she needs to be able to use her fingers like as well she's playing the guitar not Oh, mm, yeah. like, you know, not just, up and down no she needs to be able you know like the way you see those veins she needs to be able to you know give them different compresses you yeah. know so there's that and then there's this you know to just as well give it the different touch it's like touch release touch release create that touch release touch it's, age yeah touch it's, age. it's more like an aging uh technique right so that by the time she increases frequency yeah she gives him the idea of, I want to let you come. And when she notices he's about to come, she releases and goes now to touching the perineum. So she can use one the hand, one? the perineum. The gap between the balls and the anus. You know, that edgy gap. It's very sensational for men. Yeah, it's a lot of veins there. Yeah, so just imagine how she's stimulating that, the, the dick and the perineum at the same time. It's a very short distance, so it's like an S, you know, while she's touching it. So she stimulates them at the same time. It gives the same sensation of if a man is licking your nipples, touching your clitoris, and has his dick inside you at the same time. It uh -huh. feels magical. So we need to give men the, I call it double, um, double, double touch. So you get to find different um, erotic parts and touch them at the same time. Hmm. Yeah, so this oil helps in that and it helps in building pleasure. Wouldn't you find that a pleasurable experience? Would you be high hung even if you, if you even if you didn't um, end up with the penetrative sex? Would you be high hung on did I make her come? Or would you be thinking about the pleasure that you experienced in the receiving of that massage? Pleasure that I'm receiving. Okay, so then the pressure pr principle is exactly that. Now we need to stop focusing on the end game and start thinking of how did I feel along the way. It's important because if it's not in your mind, you're still going to feel inadequate. But if you tell yourself, even if I didn't orgasm while inside her, I felt good when she made me calm through touch. Premature ejaculation. Mm. Oh, okay, so... um. There was the element of different body parts needing different um, oils, different scents. You know, like the cord needed stronger scents, but then the edge of the woman of a woman's body needed to have subtle scents. So the idea was that because this is a long part of a woman's body, if it has a subtle scent, it used to invite a man's face to just go into it, and he would have to be able to like kiss her and kiss her until he gets to the scent, and it just used to bring on a lot of mindfulness and bring and create a lot of pleasure, which I find is missing. So that's one of the other reasons why we use the oils but also we use them because when we are making love most people get a monkey mind like focusing becomes hard you 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 notice this uh, lots of distractions of course we have a lot going as modern people yeah you have projects running and then you have this woman who um, needs to feel good or even you yourself you need the sex right so just imagine a scenario where you know you're having sex and then you get distracted you start thinking of paying school fees of whether you've actually paid that rent or if you press that message to go for the clients that you're waiting for, you know, um, that distraction always would be felt by your partner. So if you applied a different essential oil behind your ear and you applied another, you know, around here and then you applied another around here. So if by the time you kiss me and you get distracted, by the time you come to this part, it should be that the essential oil reminds you that it's me with not the landlord, not the school. <laughs> so I, I, I love to use them for building pleasure in uh, during the whole um, sexual experience. Mm. Could we answer the question of premature ejaculation? No, you were asking that. What about premature ejaculation? Because we talked about erectile dysfunction. Yeah. Yeah. But it, they almost have the same um, causes and issues, uh, treatment plans, or how we help each other when we are experiencing them is one, be talking about them. Um, most partners don't address their sex dysfunctions with their partner, with their, like most men don't talk about their issues. 
they they just they they give excuses or they feel a lot of shame a lot of guilt they feel like they are letting their wives down and that makes things worse so they don't get the support that they need they don't get the um, the the they, they don't get the care that they need when they don't talk about their issues so i think men need to be able to learn to own their issues and talk about them so that they both can find solutions for each other because the solution could be me and how i receive you when I know what your issue is, yeah? So premature ejaculation is, is, is one needs to be talked about. Then two, again, it's in the way we make love. Of course, toys now come in to help. Um, toys come to help with stimulation, um, like erectile dysfunction now, there are rings that can be able to sustain, um, you know, the, 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 eja the, eja the um, direction, yes. right? Um, now, with, with premature ejaculation as well, it's just flipping things around, um, you know, talking about it, finding other ways to um, to enjoy each other um, as opposed to expecting, you know, um, like, like pleasure to come from um, penetrative sex only, right? I insist on people knowing their bodies, knowing their different ways of orgasming, so that they can be able to focus on that. For a, past, for a man who experiences premature ejaculation, he needs to learn how to make his woman come as many times as possible before he can penetrate her. Yeah? Now, that orgasming is what is misunderstood by most men. Most men don't understand women's bodies and where they orgasm from. There's also no discussion about it. So he's worried that she needs to orgasm from the vagina. And so he needs to penetrate to make her happy. But if we spoke about it, if we spoke about if, for instance, um, we're making love and we have um, our part, we, we ask each other, babe, did you come? It's a very wide question, right? If I asked you, did you come? Where would your mind take you to? Wouldn't it be that you think you came because now the sex is done through penetration? Yep. Exactly. But that's not the where the answer is supposed to lie only. Right? There are so many other uh, ways of, of experiencing pleasure. There, it's not only made, there are so many uh, pleasure spots on your body. So if you go to experience pleasure on those different pleasure spots on your body, you ought to say, I felt pleasure. When you tell yourself that was pleasurable, you give yourself permission to call it an end. But when you feel pleasure on a certain part, but then expect that pleasure is what is expected here, then your mind is going to stay with that notion that you are not satisfied. What do I mean? If a woman experiences more pleasure from clitor from nipple stimulation, there are women who orgasm from their nipples. So if she experiences more pleasure from nipple stimulation, and maybe not as much from clitoral stimulation, maybe not as much from penetrative sex, and then the man doesn't feel the vaginal tightness, and then he's asking her, babe, what's up? She's like, no, I'm okay, go on. I felt my pleasure and that was enough. So I'm only Don't you think pleasure. a lot of women prefer clitoral? No, no, no. Preference should not be the problem. Now, I hope that you're enjoying this program. Over the last 15 years, I have been working online for clients in America, in Europe, and all over the world. And that is why it pains me a lot when I see a lot of African brothers and sisters saying that they do not have a job. Now, this is the problem. A lot of people are trying to look for a job in 2024 in their own town, in their own country, in their local area. Now, the truth is there are no jobs in Africa, at least not so many jobs. The good news is that we have internet these days. We have a tablet, we have a computer, we have a phone. And that means that we can do a lot of jobs. And those jobs are online. That is why over the last four years, I've been writing a book that is called Digital Goldmine. It is, a, it is a book that explains to you how you can earn money online. The 18 hustles that I've chosen are basically for Africans, okay? Because what happens when you are doing a, a online jobs is that payment is usually a problem. So these 18 side hustles that I have put together in this book, you can be paid very well and very conveniently. Okay, so the book is only a thousand Kenya shillings. That is about ten dollars. You can buy it in Kenya using pay bill number. You can buy it online from anywhere in the world using a credit or a debit card. 
all the information about this book is in the description below just need to go to the description click on the link and you can buy this book and if you have a brother you have a wife you have a husband you have a friend who does who is sitting at home and watching netflix please do buy this book for them if you are the one sitting at home and watching netflix and have nothing to do please buy this book and your life is gonna change forever because I have been doing this online and I've been traveling and I've been enjoying myself and having a lot of fun. So thank you very much. And now back to programming. It should be personal. If you ask me, did you come? I need to be able to tell you for me, I come when you stimulate my nipples. For me, I come when you kiss me and I give you, um, you know, like a deep throat. I come when I feel your dick in my throat. I need to be able to tell you what feels great for me. Um, I, there are some women who um, orgasm from the vagina. They need to be able to own that. And what about women who had their clitoris uh, mutilated? Then they keep thinking that they're not experiencing pleasure. Pleasure should be your ownership. You need to be able to own it. You need to be able to say, I experience better pleasure from my nipples. Or I, exp I ex experience better pleasure from my clitoris. Or I experience better pleasure from a squatting experience. Right? And that for me, if I squatted, I stopped putting focus on where else it's going to come from. And I allowed you to be able to enjoy the other parts of my body. So that if a woman squatted and she felt better, and a man penetrates and he doesn't sense her engagement while he's in there, then he gets to think he's not performing. It's the problem. So he gets to think he's not satisfying his woman. So he gets to think maybe she's lying, it can't stop at squatting. But she needs to own it. She needs to say, I, I, I'm okay, right? But there's a woman who doesn't care about nipple stimulation. She doesn't really care so much about clitoral stimulation. Like for her, that's foreplay, right? And she wants the deep vaginal thrusting. She wants the deep, fast vaginal thrusting. And when she expresses that, that's what she wants. So the man needs to be able for, to focus on that. I find the issues with erectile dysfunction and premature ejaculation come from anxiety, performance anxiety for men and how they are perceived by their women and their lack of understanding of what an orgasm is for a woman or lack of understanding of how the fact that a woman needs to own her pleasure. Also, did you come? Yeah, where did you come from? I came from my nipples. It felt so good when you stimulated them. It made me feel, you know, and, 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 and that's okay. Then you take it. Or well, she came. Hmm. Where she came from should not be your concern. I'm going to ask a, yeah. a naive question. Are we also talking about low libido? Yeah, we can talk about low libido. When men lose sexual desire. That's what low libido is? Yeah, because desire is what drives libido. Isn't it what leads also to premature ejaculation? I think so. Yeah, because even women experience, did you know women experience premature ejaculation? Like they come faster than they were expected to come? No. They also experience it. Some of them don't notice it. Right? Looking at the time it takes for them to stay in an orgasmic state. Um, I listen What's to... What's an orgasmic state? Being able to... The trembling. Yes, being able to feel the orgasm, because an orgasm is a feeling. How long it takes you to stay in that state is what makes or builds for a healthy, um, what I call satisfaction, satiety. Your body feels satiety or satisfaction when you're able to sustain, um, to sustain yourself in an orgasmic state. Like you, you come, but then, you know, I see so many, so many people say, oh, you know, when a man has come, you need to go get a towel and then clean him. But then you miss out on, 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 on that state. Because when you come, your body is experiencing an orgasm. You need to stay and allow the body to experience all of it before you can stand up to go and start picking towels and wipes and, you know, things like that. Right? When we're looking at the sex, um, the, 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 the sexual curve, there's the desire, then we have the climax, and then we have resolution. Right? All that is part of the sexual experience, right? Now, resolution is missed out on by some, by some people or when they are climaxing, the time they stay. Um, I was hearing someone say that she uses a toy and the toy gives her an orgasm in just seconds. And I'm thinking, what do you mean? Is that sex even? Seconds. You need 20 minutes for clitoral stimulation. 
20 minutes. Yes. And then you get a man that has, is going in there with his five minutes of hard work. Now that's the thing. It's not hard work. It's one of the things that's missing. We are missing out on, on pleasure because we want to only have sex to penetrate. We miss out on pleasure and how long it takes for someone's body to be able to. Women's bodies are like water, right? But unlike water, um, they, they, they take long to burn up, right? And then they take long to put out. A man's body is like fire, right? Unlike fire, he's easy to ignite and he's easy to put out. So if we treat each other like that, it will be easy to understand each other. So if she's water, she will take long, but she will stay longer in an orgasmic state. Women enjoy orgasms much better than men because they sustain their orgasm. A good orgasm will last for at least for five minutes. Right? Well, for a man, it will last for two minutes if, if, it's, if it's healthy. Yeah? But now if, you, if you're saying that you use your toy and you come in seconds, then you're missing out on the joy of five minutes. Why? Because the foreplay is underestimated, right? So if her water takes long to boil, then you come on her clitoris and you're stimulating it for one minute, you're also going to sustain her in an orgasmic state for, five, for, for, for one minute. She won't be able to, act, to, to feel the orgasm for many minutes. And then so many women are blamed for taking long to come, as if it's a problem. It's not a problem? It's not. She's feeling. It's feeling good. Can she stay in her feeling state? Why are we rushing for poop? She's came up. Because we are, we are interested in, did she come? Did she come? Did he come? We're not interested in the process. Yet pleasure is in the how process. About, how about, it's a climax to coming for women, right? Yeah. And so I think the worry for men is that I am going to be done and dusted yeah. and out mm. of zinc. Yeah. <laughs> before... She does has she comes. So yeah. I think that is the that is the problem, I believe. Which is why we are saying to avoid that, he needs to learn about her body, her erotic parts, and how to make her calm more times, how to boil her water, how to be able to set the water until it comes to boiling, knowing that also putting it, cooling it down is going to take some time, right? So if he has that in mind, he's going to use other aspects of creating pleasure using toys, um, you know, massaging each other, uh, changing rooms, changing sex styles, so that it's, you, he's not putting focus on finally penetrating. So by the time he's penetrating, he's doing the ignite quick, run out quick. He's that fire that is easy to spark, to spark and easy to put out because he knows himself like that. So he needs to engage in these other forms of creating pleasure, building pleasure, so that the man, the woman experiences her orgasm the way she would experience it. Awesome. Yeah. Hmm. I'm blown away. Yeah. There are some foods that men can eat to yes. be able to improve or increase their capacity to sustain erections and also heal premature ejaculation. While I talked about stimulation, while I talked about them understanding that there has to be blood flow, proper blood flow, I feel also men not understanding their bodies and how they work is affecting them. Because the food they eat affects their blood flow. If they don't exercise, there's no blood flow. We are not meant to be sedentary beings. But you guys are on the laptop from morning to morning, right? Um, then you're in your cars from laptop to the car, to the office, to coffee is brought to you. There's no movement. We're meant to be mobile people. Yeah? Men move less even when they are strong. The less you move, the more sex issues you're going to have. It's one of them. Poor diet. Men don't want to touch their food. They want to eat anything and everything. They're not mindful. I'm not saying you should reduce how much you eat, but being mindful about it. So I see they're excited about njugus, peanuts. They're yeah. excited about... Um, Very good. Um, about mohombero. <laughs> yes, mohombero. But about things which are very small amounts of what it takes to be able to build good testosterone levels. They just need to know that thyroid health is important. So what foods are good for thyroid health? I have uh, blends here which have ashwagandha. So there's What's a ashwagandha. Food. It's a hub um, that helps with Can I have a look at health. one? Mm. There are two types. Yes. I make some for women and I make some for men. Mm -hmm. So they have ashwagandha. It's a, it's a hub. Um, then they have maca in them. 
yeah so these are adaptogenic herbs herbs that help to relax the body on the inside but also increase blood flow so there's maca there's ashwagandha then they need to get herbs that work on testosterone or rather on um on their testosterone levels like the, like um so palmetto mm. so palmetto is hugely taken in uganda by most men this holy basil yeah. holy basil is a herb that also is an adaptogen we call it mujaja in uganda but there's the purple holy basil so in uganda we have the green holy basil and the purple holy basil i did an interesting uh a survey in ukambani because i came here and then i was told kamba women love sex and kamba men love sex and then they enjoy their sex right and i love food i'm a researcher in food right and how food affects you know our hormones yeah so i went to find out what in their soil gives them that fire and guess what it's where i get my holy basil i found bushes and bushes of holy basil and cactus in and you know combine them like no wonder it's in their soil and it's in the food they eat and that's where the fire comes from and since then i keep going to get my holy basil from ukambani i stopped getting it from uganda yeah because the men in uganda are the ones we make that tea for the evening tea has to be mujaja yeah mm. yeah holy basil but i find they're mistaken about which type is good it's the purple one which the chinese call tulsi mm. yeah so those adaptogenic foods are good for testosterone. Do you know if men if men are taking them here in Kenya? If yeah, they are but I find they are taking um they are taking ginseng which is um uh, mukombero they need to blend it. They need to blend ginseng it. Ginseng is mukombero. With the gins the African ginseng. There's Indian ginseng like ashwagandha is ginseng. It's Indian ginseng. Like holy basil is one of them most um rather no uh, ashwagandha. So mukombero is uh, African ginseng. But it's it has it's mild it needs to be combined by with maca or with uh, ashwagandha or to be combined with other types of ginseng mm. for it to be able because they have to eat a lot of it for it to be able to work amazing yeah i think we are coming to the end of this episode what a beautiful one tell a lot of heat though what was the heat <laughs> is this not the episode where you were you were you were you were you're teaching us how to ride how women how to ride how they need to angle it yes, follow it that, and rock it mm -hmm, that was a bit hot yeah oh, okay <laughs> so that we don't have issues so that men go away from performance anxiety you know um it's all about people talking with each other i have a client who says he has a very short dick very short dick but his woman has never found out because by the time he's down there she's on heat she's on fire she cannot even see who is entering she doesn't know if it's the fingers which have gone there if it's the tongue or if it's the dick because all she screams is he's doing an amazing job mm. <laughs> you know it's because of 120 percent she's not complaining yeah yeah can only imagine <laughs> So performance anxiety, chill. Mm. Let's just learn the act. The, yeah. Mm. yeah. So people of the internet, I hope that you loved episode five. It was full of fire. Even our microphone died. Right. That's moldy, clearing off. So please leave a comment. We are going to episode seven. We are going to be talking about the, the, the orgasm cup. Yeah. We are going to introduce it in episode six. Yeah. And then finish it. Okay. Later on, right? Your leadership. Mm -hmm. mm. Thanks. I like the way you give me leadership. Uh, men like the leadership and their ego. And we like, we like to be led. We like to see men lead. We like, them to start to, we like to see them have clarity. They're decisive. They lead well. We love it. Oh, most of us love it. I do love it. You do? I do. You like to be vulnerable? Yeah, I love. Have a man f give you the lead? Yes. Um yeah, I love it. I love I love strong men. I love men that lead, that stand in their leadership. I love men that are decisive, have clarity. I love men that know how to chase after their dreams. You know what they want. Yeah, I want to be that man. <laughs> <laughs> Please leave a comment. And please consider subscribing to the channel. The more you subscribe, the more we have guests that are as articulate and as wonderful as Doreen. Thank you. So until episode six, bye for now.